Ladies, welcome to FCC Level 2, our postpartum series. This program is designed to help restore your core and get your body feeling back to normal postpartum. Labor and delivery are a traumatic process for us. There's a lot that happens and a lot that we have to deal with, and this is one of the best ways to help restore all of that so that you can get back to doing your normal day-to-day -day functions safely and effectively. This program is designed to help fix diastasis recti, incontinence, prolapse, and rebuild that pelvic floor and core strength that we need to lift our kids, to play on the floor with them, and to do all the things we wanna get back to doing. We do have some basic strength and mobility, as well as some impact-based activities that will get you back to running if you are an impact athlete. And don't worry if you're not an impact athlete or you're not ready for that yet. We will have modifications to help you find success along your journey. So welcome to the Road to Recoveries, ladies. Enjoy. Hey, ladies. Description and expectations for your program. Now this program contains eight workouts designed to be done with two workouts per week and repeating that. Week one, you'll have again two workouts, week two, two workouts, week three, two workouts, and week four, two workouts. Now do that for four weeks and then repeat that cycle. We recommend that you go through this program for two to three months. The reason why is you'll see results as we go through this because this is a neuromuscular program. This is designed to retrain your body from the inside out. Okay? It's also great to compare how week one felt the first time through and then four weeks later compare how you feel the second time through. Now, if you choose to go through that program a little bit faster, by all means, you can go ahead and do that. But we know some of us don't have time for that, so twice a week is perfectly fine for those of us who only have time for twice a week. Now, your program design. Again, those two workouts per week have different formats. Format number one is a superset format. You will always have six exercises on this, and we will always work to a one-minute clock with a 15-second break in between or transition in between. It's not a whole lot of rest time. Uh, these workouts are designed for intention, not intensity. So if you want to push yourself harder, by all means push yourself harder, but we're going for quality over quantity in these actions because we're working to reprogram our bodies again from the inside out. Now with that superset format, we'll show you two exercises at a time, and we'll do those two exercises back and forth three times of each one. If you would like to add more intensity to that, you can do that up to five times of each one, again, depending on your level of fitness or your desired level of intensity. The second program format that we have is a circuit style. Again, we only have six exercises working to that minute clock, 15 seconds of rest, but we'll go through it in a true circuit fashion. We'll do exercise number one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then we'll start back at the top and go right back through it. Again, you can do a minimum of three rounds, maximum of five rounds for increased intensity on that right there. Okay. Enjoy. Hi ladies, this video is on the equipment that you will need for your workouts. In addition to the Pelvicore Pro, we'll be using a couple of different weight modalities to help us through our exercises. Now you can feel free to do this all body weight, so no weight whatsoever, or choose to go a little bit heavier or a little bit lighter. Couple things that you're gonna need or want, yoga mat. We'll be doing several exercises that are in a prone or hands on the floor or supine, which is belly up, hips on the floor exercises, so you're going to want something that you're comfortable laying on. If you don't have a yoga mat, feel free to use a towel. Second thing that you'll want is something like a knee pad. We do use these for kneeling positions. We'll be down on the floor. Uh, so pillows, gardening pads, anything along those lines to provide your knee a little cushion and support will be great. Next piece of equipment, sand bell. If you don't have a sand bell at home, you can use something like a bag of rice or a bag of beans or even a small backpack filled with some weights. We use these for swings, for reaches, squats, or a little bit of extra load. The sandbags are great modalities because they aren't a solid uh, material or a solid object. They're very functional for our day-to-day -day uses. Even things like picking up your groceries, babies, kids, dogs, anything along those lines. We'll also be using hand weights. Now I have two what are called power blocks. You may have some dumbbells at home. You don't need anything that's super strenuous. Two pounds is great, even up to 10 to 15 pounds, depending on your level. If you don't have weights at home, you can even use something as simple as a soup can. The last piece of equipment that you may want, especially if you are recently postpartum or dealing with diastasis recti, is an elevated surface like a box or even a chair, couch, or ottoman structure. 
The reason why is anytime we go into a prone position or kind of a plank position, we're going to put pressure on that diastasis. We're going to put pressure on the core. If we're working to close that gap, we don't want to put unnecessary pressure on that tissue. So we're going to want to be in a surf or on an elevated surface that helps protect that core a little bit more. So again, if you're recently postpartum or working on fixing your diastasis, please have an elevated surface like a box or a chair handy for those exercises that require it. All right, ladies, here is our warm up. We're going to start with the ball already on, but we are going to start in a seated position. So have something like a chair or a couch, something comfortable that you can actually relax on for this first portion of the warm up. That ball and band just slips on like a pair of pants and it should be just above the knees. We're going to go ahead and start in a seated position. To best warm up our pelvic core, we actually start with some intentional breath work. Now for that breath work, we're always going to have the same strategy, which is breathing in through the nose and breathing up into the chest. We want to think about kind of that top portion of the abs and the rib cage expanding, not our belly expanding. So breathing up and into that rib cage. We're also going to incorporate a small pause into that. So pausing or holding that breath, maintaining that tension, and then we're going to slowly exhale. As you exhale, and this part is very critical, exhale through the mouth like you're breathing through a straw. This very slow push as we go through that. Okay. To start, I always invite you to close your eyes as you can feel going through this. You can feel how that core moves, how the rib cage moves. Go ahead and breathe in through the nose. Hold that breath. Slow exhale out through the mouth. Make sure to get all of that air out. Going again. We're gonna go two more times here, really think about drawing in, taking a good three to four seconds to draw in. Hold that breath for three to four seconds, maintaining that pressure, maintaining that tension, and that controlled exhale, very slow, like you're blowing up a balloon. Feel that rib cage come together and push all of that air out. Let's go one more time. Big deep breath in all the way up and into the chest. Slow exhale. All the way out. We're going to add in some reaches now as we go through this. Go ahead and reach those hands nice and tall up overhead, almost pushing the palms up towards the ceiling. Get that big breath in. Again, breathing up into the rib cage, holding that breath. Exhale and relax those hands down. Let's go again. We're going to do that four times here. Big breath in, big reach up. Reaching helps lengthen the core, provide some thoracic spine mobility as we go through this. And breathing helps prime all those layers of the pelvic core. We're going two more times. Big deep breath in. Big exhale out. Good. Last one here. Big deep breath in. And nice slow exhale out. Good. We're going to take our reaches laterally now. I'm going to take my right hand, reach it up overhead, and I'm going to lean to my left. So I'm really lengthening that whole right side of my core. And I'm going to take that again, that nice deep breath in through the nose. You want to sense almost a stretch through here, reaching that hand just a little bit further, again, holding that breath still. Nice controlled exhale on the way out. We're going to alternate sides. Go ahead and hit that left side. Left hand nice and tall up overhead. Big reach, big breath in. Opening up that rib cage. And again, nice easy exhale. All the way out. Get a lesion over the top. Breath work is the best way to neuromuscularly connect that whole PCNS. Big exhale. As we breathe in, that respiratory diaphragm draws down, your pelvic floor draws down, and the abdominals and low back and hip muscles lengthen. Perfect. We're going to go on rotation now. Go ahead and take that right hand and we're going to reach to the left. So I turn my chest, big deep breath in, hold that breath. 
then come on back home. Taking over to the other side. Again, thinking about turning that rib cage. Rotation is actually the only plane of motion that lengthens all four layers of those abdominal muscles at one time. So for those of us who are working on having a better core, a stronger core, a more functional core, rotation is where the money's at. Again, remember to turn that rib cage, turn that chest, don't just reach the hands. One more big deep breath in. And big exhale as we come out. Beautiful. We're gonna get the lower half going a little bit now. We're gonna start getting some adductors and some glutes going by doing a little ball and band work here. Okay? We're gonna go ahead and squeeze that ball with the knees. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze that ball. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk my feet forward and back. Step the feet forward, step the feet back. Just right foot forward, right foot back. Now you can take this a little bit faster or you can take it a little bit slower. We're just gonna do a couple seconds here, which will start to sense that you should be squeezing still sensing those inner thigh muscles starting to work. Beautiful. We're going to hold that squeeze still, and now I'm going to take my feet a little bit wide and then back together. So I'm going wide to narrow with those feet still squeezing, still holding that ball right there. Beautiful, beautiful. And then we're going to take those feet, and this one's a little funky. We're going toes out, toes in. Turn those feet, toes out, toes in. If your feet feel like they're not cooperating, just go a little bit slower. I know this one is funny. Good. Three, two, one. Beautiful. Now we're going to create the opposite sensation. We're going to push out against the band. So I'm going to push those knees out against the band. My legs should be separated from the ball. And I'm going to hold that tension. And I'm going to do that same thing where I step the feet forward and back. Now, right now, we're working to stimulate some of those lower extremity muscles that directly connect to our pelvic floor, our adductors and our glutes. Boom, good. Maintain that tension here. You might feel this start to burn right away, or it may take a little bit of effort here. We're going to go a little feet wide to narrow now. I'm going to step this foot out to the side. My emphasis is pushing from the knees, not from the feet. So my knees move out. My feet kind of follow. Make sure you're not doing this one where the feet go and knock knees, but pushing out against that band. Great. Ooh, starting to feel that work now. Beautiful. We're going to go same thing, that toes out, toes in. Toes out, toes in. Now start slow. And we're building kind of this new awareness from the hips here, from the feet. So start slow, and then you can always work to go faster once you get it going. Good. We're going last three, two, one. Beautiful job. Ladies, we're going to take this into a standing position now. You can go ahead and ditch that chair. We're going to go through some lunges and reaches. We've kind of got the upper portion of the PCNS going, the lower portion of the PCS going. Now we're going to build that into one solid global action here. We're going to do three different lunges. We're going to start with a lunge straight forward. I'm going to my right foot straight forward on this one. You do need some tension against the band. So pushing out against that band there. Lunging into it, hands are going to come up overhead. And I'm going to take my nice deep breath in. As I come home, I'm going to exhale and I'm going to squeeze the ball as I come back home. Breathe in with a nice big reach up. Exhale as we come back home and squeeze. Big reach, come back and squeeze. Last time, big reach, breath in, exhale and squeeze. Now we just lunged on the right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna balance on the left. Balance on the left, reach that right foot forward. We're gonna challenge that core and hip stability. This isn't a squat, this is a reach with the hip. So my leg is relatively straight, and I'm gonna push that hip out and my right foot just helps me get out there. Same strategy, breathing in and going a little exhale. Perfect. We're going to go one more time here. Breathe in, a little exhale. We're going to take that laterally now. My right foot's going to lunge out to the right side. Both hands are going to reach over the top and lean to my left. So if anything, just reach that right hand nice and tall. Go in that big reach. Come back home. Same thing. We're going to breathe in. Good exhale as we come back home. Give that ball a little squeeze. Breathe in. Good. Exhale and a little squeeze. One more time. <sighs> Exhale and a little squeeze. Now we're going to do that balance. I'm going to balance on that left. Float that right foot out to the side. Keep that foot as low to the ground as possible. 
And that right hand's still just gonna reach over the top there. We're challenging a little hip mobility with our lunge, and now we're challenging a little hip stability with our balance. Okay, we're gonna go one more time here. Beautiful. We're gonna take it in rotation now. Left foot's gonna stay facing straight forward. My right foot is gonna open up at about 125 degrees or to what would be about four o'clock if this is my 12 o'clock and straight behind me is six o'clock. Four o'clock, opening up. My left leg's gonna stay straight. My right hand's gonna rotate around, big deep breath in. Come back home, <sighs> squeeze that ball. Again, big reach, big drive, come back home. You may feel a little inner thigh stretch, you may feel a little core stretch. Good, <sighs> exhale, and let's go one more time, big reach. Come back home, nice little squeeze. Beautiful, now we're gonna go that balance. We're gonna bounce on the left, and I'm gonna do that same rotation where I'm opening up that right foot to about four o'clock. Push out against that band. If I push with my right, my left leg has to resist a little bit more. That makes this a little bit more challenging. Good, and if you're falling over, you're doing it right. We're doing it right. One more time there, perfect. We're gonna do that same thing, but all on the left side now. So left leg's gonna lunge forward. Give those hands up nice and tall. You might feel a little stretch on this back hip. That's perfect. <sighs> Come back home. You know, we're kind of combining this whole global motion, getting my breath work going with my hips. It's functional. So we need that PCNS to work as one solid unit as we go through action here. One more time, big deep breath in, big exhale out. And we're gonna go that balance. Balance on the right foot now. That left foot's gonna reach forward, hands come up overhead. Come back home, little squeeze. Again, big reach pushing that hip forward and come back home. Good. We know hip mobility and hip stability are two of the biggest causes of hip dysfunction and pelvic core dysfunction. Good. Take it laterally now. We're gonna go a little lunge to the left. My left hand's gonna reach up overhead, so I'm leaning to my right side, opening up that lateral core, breath in. Exhale and squeeze. Good. Sinking on into that. We'll exhale and squeeze, beautiful. We're gonna go one more time here. Breathing in and big exhale. Now we're gonna go into that lateral reach. So I'm gonna bounce on my right, my left foot's gonna float out, and that left hand's just gonna pop up overhead. Find that breath work. Good. Two more there. And you're gonna find that you have one leg that you favor. It's your favorite leg for stability. We're gonna go in rotation now. Right foot's gonna stay facing straight forward. That left foot's gonna open up, kind of that 125, 135 degree angle there. Reach that left hand around. Come back home and squeeze. Take it big into rotation. Come back home. Good, big breath in. Squeeze that ball as you come back every time. Get that resistance against the band. A little squeeze. We're gonna go that balance now. Bounce on the right. Open that left foot up. Go in that little toe touch as needed. Challenge that distance. The slower, the better. The slower, the better. One more time there. Beautiful. Ladies, we're gonna do our last part of our warm up, which is our squat series. We're gonna go six different foot positions. It just challenges our hips a little bit differently and challenges different muscles. Six different foot positions for a pulse squat. So we're gonna drop it into a squat and stay right there. I'm gonna start with my left foot forward, about half a foot forward, and I have a little bit of tension against the band. So my feet are about hip width apart. As I drop down, I'm gonna have that tension against the band. Sit into that pulse squat right here. Bouncing from the hips, not just the knees, so not just the knees, but the hips bouncing as I go through that. Beautiful. Go ahead and switch those feet. Keep that pulse going. For where you should feel the weight in your body, I like to think 75-25. 75% of my weight is towards the back end, towards my heels, 25% in the rest of the foot. Woo. Go ahead, take those feet narrow, or relatively narrow, squeezing the ball, hold that squeeze, and get into that pulse. We want those hips down and back. Down and back. That's gonna encourage us to use our hamstrings and our glutes, and not so much our quads and our knees. Taking the feet a little bit wide now, so I have that tension against the band, Squat, think just that light push, very light push. My knees shouldn't be outside my feet, but I should be kind of maintaining that tension in the band as I pulse through there. Beautiful. 
Ooh-wee, burning, burning here. Go ahead and let's go toes out. So I'm taking my feet hip width apart, toes slightly out, dropping into that little squat position, hitting that pulse. Again, tension against the band, a slight push, not overdoing it. Make sure that Velcro is not creating that rip sensation. Beautiful, last one here, we go toes in. This one feels a little funky, squeeze that ball, drop it on down, so I'm squeezing that ball, toes in. If you feel like your toes are still straight forward, but it feels like they're turned in, that's okay too, just something to work on. Here we go, last three, two, one. Beautiful ladies, you're all warmed up. Click the next button and get ready for your workout. Hey ladies, welcome to week three, workout number one. We have a superset workout for you today. Uh, we're gonna go back and forth between two exercises, three times of each one, up to five times if you're feeling a little spicy. Uh, and we've got six exercises total, so we'll have three different supersets that you're going through. You may want a weight. You're definitely gonna need um, a box or an elevated surface if you have sensitive wrists or shoulders or back. We do have a prone exercise. We have a supinated exercise where you're gonna be all on the floor going belly up on that. And then, as always, some good lunges and squats as we go through this. All right, I'm gonna show you Superset number one right now. Superset number one, we are doing some lunges to start. I'm going a anterior and posterior lunge pivots. That means I'm going forward and backwards. I'm gonna come all the way forward on my right, then I'm gonna come all the way back on my right. Now, as I step back, I'm actually gonna shift that weight into my left leg. So if I go forward on the right, weight's in the right leg. As I go backwards with the right foot, weight's on the left leg there. So really it's just kind of that toe touch back, a little lunge pivot there. With that lunge, I'm gonna incorporate some reaches. As I lunge forward to my right, my right hand's gonna come up overhead, and my left hand's gonna turn across. My chest is gonna follow that as I go. That's gonna turn my whole chest, whole core, whole thoracic spine, and that right hand actually ends up coming leaning forward up overhead there. So I get a really great load in the glutes, and I get a really great uh, thoracic spine mobility exercise there. As I go backwards with that right foot, my hands will switch. That right hand will come across, left hand will come up overhead. So lunge forward, right hand, left hand rotates across. And as I lunge back, switch it up and switch it up. I want you to let your eyes follow the hand that is rotating or reaching across so that you get that full trunk rotation as you go through that there. Find your breath as you go through it, just nice and comfortable. If you really would like to add some load to this, feel free to add some dumbbells in those presses and reaches. Your second exercise, you are gonna want a weight. We're doing a little curl with a little squat. I'm gonna go toes in, so we're actually gonna squeeze the ball. As I squat, I'm gonna reach down at knee, squeezing that ball, make sure the heels stay down to the floor. As I come up, I'm just gonna curl the chest, and I'm gonna turn as I go through that. I don't have to squeeze the ball at the top here, just kinda let the hips do the work. Squeeze on the way down, curl as I come up. Alternate sides there, and squat, squeeze, little curl and turn, squat, squeeze, Curl and turn as you go through that. Find your breath work. Typically like to breathe in at the top. Hold that breath as I squeeze. <sighs> Exhale as I come up through that turn. So again, breathing in, holding that breath on the way down. <sighs> Exhale as you come up into that turn. And that is our first superset. Exercise number one, going those lunge pivots with our reaches here. Here we go. Lunge on that right. Left hand reaches across, right hand comes up overhead. And then go in that little pivot all the way back here. We are gonna switch sides at 30 seconds. You can keep that weight in that lunging leg, that forward leg. So as the right leg comes forward, that's my forward leg. As the right leg goes back, I shift that weight over to my left foot. Big turn, big breath here. A little flow through it. Getting ready to switch sides, hitting those last few. Beautiful, go ahead and switch. And that ball and band might move, feel free to adjust it. You should have tension against the band as you go through this. So I'm not letting my knees buckle, I'm not squeezing the ball, pushing out against that band, having that nice resistance. Good. Find that stability right through there. That's the hard part, finding that stability as I shift through it. 10 seconds, here we go. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Turn, Love it, three. Two, one, beautiful. All right, we're gonna go that squat and curl. Squat and curl, grab it onto your weight here. Going toes in, squat and squeeze. All right, here we go. Squat and squeeze, little reach down as I come up. Turn 
as I go through that curl. Squat, squeeze, pick that up, we'll curl. Beautiful. Again, find that breath. Doesn't have to be fast, nice and controlled. Make sure as you go through that squat, you're driving the heels down and back. Chest stays up, nice and tall. It's okay to fall forward just a little bit. Right, we just wanna start the motion from the hips. So hips go down and back to start, like I'm going to sit down on a chair, or on that box right behind me. Doing that big turn, turn in that chest here, looking good. Squat, squeeze, drive it on up. We're challenging that hips ability to internally rotate, which is our emergency break. Super important for our mobility and stability. Here we go, last three, two, one, beautiful job. Hey ladies, here is your second super set. First one, we have a lateral lunge, leap, and then jump sequence. If you're a little nervous about the leaping and the jumping, don't worry, we have some modifications for you. Uh, and then we've got a supine activity where we're gonna be belly up, so you may want that yoga mat as we go through this. That bridge activity also has a little press, so you may want some weights as we go through this, okay? First exercise, that lateral lunge. I'm gonna lunge to my right. Just go a good old fashioned lateral lunge, tension against the band, trail leg straight. I'm gonna come back home, give that a little squeeze. Then I'm gonna go, right foot's gonna leap. Bounce on my left, I'm gonna leap to my right, come back home. Then I'm gonna go a jump, both feet. Jump, small jump, come right back home. Right. So this is my home space here. So I'm going that lateral lunge, boom. Lateral leap, boom. Lateral jump, boom. So we're challenging some of that impact, right? That building back into impact training here. Now if the leap or the jump make you nervous, you don't have to do those. Those are up tweaks. You can always do a lateral step and balance. And then for the jump, you can just do a quick two-step, 
quick two steps. So the down tweak is not leaping or jumping. If you're going no impact, it's that lateral step and balance and the lateral two step real quick on that one. Okay? We will switch sides halfway, which means I'll do that lateral lunge to my left. Boom, leap to my left, jump to my left, come back home. Pro tip, if you're feeling a little bit of leaking or some incontinence or some uh, prolapse, go ahead and squeeze that ball as you go into that jump and hold that squeeze as you go through your jumps. That'll actually help by giving your pelvic floor a little bit more structural support. Our second exercise, we're gonna go prone. Excuse me, we're going supine. We're going belly up here. I'm doing that nice bridge hold. We're gonna add in a little chest press to this. So what you wanna do is you wanna roll those hips back, lift those hips up, get in that nice reverse plank position. And then I'm gonna go for my press. I'm gonna go three chest presses, woo, bench presses, and then rock it right back down. Now, if you wanna go more, by all means, go for more, just make sure those hips stay up. This should not hurt your low back. If you're straining through the low back by pushing too hard, that'll get that low back to cramp up or feel discomfort. Make sure you're using a lot, utilizing that core. I do that by first rolling my hips back. That means my core is gonna pull, and then I'm gonna go through that lift and then through that press right there. So make sure you get that lift and press as we go through that. And that is our second exercise. Here we go. All right, going that lateral leap, lunge, jump. Here we go, lateral lunge first. Lateral lunge first. Then I'm going that leap. Then I'm going that little squeeze, jump, jump. Lateral lunge, lateral leap, lateral jump, boom, boom. So it's really light impact training that we're getting here. We're challenging some stability, we're challenging some spring, and the step and some impact control. Remember to breathe through this as you go. <sighs> Good little squeeze that ball, jump, jump, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna switch sides here. So I'm gonna lunge to my left, leap to my left, and then I'm gonna do a little jump to my left. <sighs> All about that impact management right here. Get that nice <sighs> controlled exhale as you land. <sighs> especially if we're dealing with some incontinence Ooh. or even some prolapse. Beautiful. Boom, pop, pop. Here we go, last three, two, one. Nice job. We're gonna go ahead, get into that bridge. So grab onto your weight. We're gonna drive those heels into the floor. Roll those hips back, that primes that core. All right, here we go. We'll roll the hips, lift. Three presses. <sighs> Rock it on back down. I like to breathe in before I lift the hips up. <sighs> you can exhale as you lift the hips, or you can exhale as you come back down. Choice is yours. Bonus if you want to squeeze that ball while you're holding the hips up, be my guest. Good. Remember, push those heels down. We're going to encourage those hamstrings, those glutes help drive us up so we're not using our low back. Good, good. Again, breath work doesn't have to be specific. Do what feels natural to you. Remember to breathe up into that chest. Try not to push that air out into the belly. 10 seconds. Nice job, ladies. Here we go, last little bit here. Beautiful. Great job, ladies. Done with that second superset, round one.
Ladies, superset number three, last two exercises here. We've got a transverse plane lunge. If you wanna add some weight to this, by all means, grab some dumbbells, grab a sandbell, just hold on to that at chest. And then we've got a prone activity. So if you need a box or a chair, have that handy, otherwise we're taking it to the floor. Okay. First thing we're doing, we're doing a transverse plane lunge. Let me take that right leg, and I'm gonna open up in rotation. That kind of 125, 135 degree lunge. Front leg's gonna stay straight, and that front foot, most importantly, is gonna stay nailed into the floor. If that foot is turning, if that knee is buckling, that's your body's way of saying, you don't have the mobility there quite yet. So, shorten it up. Less range of motion in that step. I'm gonna go lunge on my right, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna balance woo, on that right. So I gotta shift my weight over. Then I'm gonna come back just doing the reverse on my left. So I'm now lunging on my left leg, right leg is straight, woo, and coming up to that balance. Get a little toe touch as needed for that one. But again, going that lunge, try and shift your chest and head over this leg. That's gonna load up your hip so you have the stability. We're pushing off the lunging leg. That foot's pushing us up. Make sure we're not stepping into it and then rocking back to push us up and off. You're gonna push off the lunging leg. So I'm just gonna alternate right side, left side. You don't need to switch sides because you're gonna hit both sides either way there. Our last activity, we're taking it prone and we are gonna do some body strength today. We're gonna knock out some push-ups. We are gonna combine that with a little bit of a sagittal plane hip drive so it's not a full minute of push-ups. Ooh, you do get a little bit of a break here. Taking it prone. Going into that good old push-up position, I'm gonna do that sagittal plane hip drive where I drive the hips back, breathe in. I'm gonna hold that breath actually as I come down and go right into my push-up. Exhale as I come back up. Hip drive, push-up, hip drive, and then into that push-up right there. Now, if that little narrow, I have a narrow hand position, okay? That can be a lot for the triceps and a lot for the shoulders. Adjust your hand position. If it gets easier, go a little bit wider. Even rotating your hands out or rotating your hands in can change how those shoulders feel. If you have some shoulder pain, feel free to play around with that hand position to see what feels best for you. Now, if you're going, push-ups aren't for me, they really, really hurt my shoulders, you can just do that sagittal plane hip drive the whole time. Another happy medium, ladies, is to actually hit that hip drive but as you come down, go to your knees so you can knock out that full range of motion. Push up there. I'd much rather have you go full range of motion from the knees than just an elbow snap from the elbows there. Full range of motion is always better. Okay, ladies, those are your two. Let's get ready to get started here. All right, here we go, lunges. Open it up in rotation, hitting that transverse plane lunge. Bouncing on up. Taking it back to the left. Again, you don't need to switch sides. See, I'm rotating open to the right. Left leg will be straight. Pushing on up to that balance. And then I just rotate back to my left. Hit that balance right there. Trail leg will be straight. You might feel a nice little stretch on that inner thigh. Beautiful. Good. Sinking those hips down and back. This one's not about speed. We're looking for depth of the lunge and how well you can get up and out of it. Can you get into that balance? A little squeeze of that ball as you go. Boom, nice job. We're past that halfway point here. Keep working again. If you wanna add a little extra load to this for your next rounds, feel free to hold the weight at chest. You can even add a little reach down at knee. Good. We'll breathe in, I like to exhale as I stand up out of that. Typically we want to exhale as we exert the most energy here. Last rep, beautiful. All right, next. We're going prone, hitting those sagittal plane hip drives with that push-up, with that push-up. Again, if you need to go to knees for your push-up, go to knees. If you need to do just hip drives, do just hip drives. Here we go, driving those hips back, breathe in. As I come forward, hold that breath. Doing that push-up. I'm holding my breath through the push-up, exhaling as I come back up. Like we said in the description, go ahead and play around with that hand position. Narrows, tough on those triceps. Can be a really tough position because small muscles there. Try taking your hands a little bit wide. Remember that breath work. Pass that halfway point. Again, if you need to go to knees, drop to knees as you go through that push up. Beautiful. Last bit here. Hold strong. Whew. 
five, four, three, two, and one. Woo! Nice job, ladies. Super set number three, round one, done. Enjoy. Congratulations on finishing your workout, ladies. Here is your cool down. You do not need that ball and band. You can get rid of that. We're just gonna go for a nice, easy stretch with some of that breath work here. We're gonna start with our right foot forward. Kind of that mid-range motion stance. Not a full lunge, but just enough where I can get this back hip extended. We're gonna go ahead and breathe in and drive those hips forward, looking for a stretch in that hip. If you want that heel to come up, let that heel come up. Take that big, deep approach, getting down and into that. Again, should feel like a stretch not any weight in that front leg. <sighs> a little exhale. You can keep that foot out there or step into it every single time. That's your choice. Breathing in. <sighs> a little exhale. Go again, breathe in, hold those hands up overhead. Hold that hip forward. And now we're gonna take it into a little lateral reach. So I'm gonna reach one hand high, one hand low. And then switch those hands. Moving those hips side to side. Still should feel a stretch in this back hip here. Maybe a little bit in that lateral core. Just that nice, easy flow. Beautiful. Let's go one more each side there. Big reach. Big drive. Let's go ahead and switch those legs. So I'm going to take that left leg forward. Drive those hands nice and tall up overhead. Searching for that stretch in my right hip. Breathe in. And breathe out. And always breathing in through the nose. Always breathing out through the mouth. Big drive, let's hold it there. Go ahead and reach those hands laterally. And we're gonna lean up over the top. Sliding those hips a little side to side as we go. Again, just worked out, just looking for that nice easy glide in the hips. Nice easy stretch. Nothing strenuous. Beautiful. We're gonna go ahead and stretch out the hamstring. I'm gonna start with my left leg slightly forward. Right foot slightly back, only about a foot in between them. And I'm gonna go for a little downswing. So I'm gonna reach those hands down and back. And I'm gonna have my left leg straight, right leg bent. Good, and just come back to normal. 
full exhale. Beautiful coming down. Go ahead and push that left big toe down to the ground. A little bit of calf. Beautiful. Take both hands. Same motion. We're going to go both hands to the outside of that left leg. Good. Kind of turn the hips slightly. Turn that upper body slightly as you go through that. Beautiful. One more time there. Same thing. We're going to go hands down to the outside of the right leg. So I'm just turning my chest the opposite way. You might notice you feel different portions of the hamstring stretch as we go through that. That is perfect. We actually have three different fibers that make up those hamstrings. Ooh, so they stretch differently depending on where we reach. Go ahead and switch those feet. So with that right foot forward, driving those hands down and back. Give that nice easy reach. And it should just feel like a stretch, nothing strenuous. Good. Take those hands to the outside of the right. And then we're gonna go ahead and take those hands to the outside of that left leg and turn that chest. And for a little bit more active tension, pulling in some hamstring, just gently push that right big toe down to the ground. Nice. Wonderful. Ladies, we're gonna go a little inner thigh here. Taking the feet nice and wide, we're gonna go ahead and go that little lateral shift. I'm gonna slide my weight over to my right side. My right hand's gonna reach high. Use that left hand, give yourself a little hip assist and push that hip down. So reaching with the right, push that left hand down into the hip. Come on home, one more time there. Beautiful, and then let's take it over to the other side. So hands going on the right hip, lunge to the left, reach that left hand nice and tall, a little breathe in. Breathe out, you just find that nice stretch on that, hopefully the inside of the thigh. You might not feel it exactly where I'm explaining or what I'm telling you, and that's okay. Everybody feels stretches a little bit differently depending on where we are each individually most tight. Good, we're gonna do a little rotation now. I'm gonna, as I lunge over to my right side, I'm gonna turn my hands to the right, and as I lunge over to the left, turn my hands to the left. This is designed to be nice and slow. Let's think about turning the hip. I'm turning my right hip as I turn to my left. Turning the left hip. Right, beautiful, one more time each side there. Rotate and turn, rotate and turn, beautiful. We're gonna add in some reaches here just to get that thoracic spine nice and unwound. I'm gonna go, my right hand's gonna go up overhead, and I'm gonna turn to my right. I'm gonna lean forward with that right hand, so I'm leaning towards the camera here. My left hand's gonna reach just across there. Let my eyes follow that, I'm gonna turn, Go through my reaches, right hand's coming up over the top. Left hand falls in rotation there. Keep your feet nailed into the ground. And we're just gonna let that upper body work. One more time, big reach, and then take it over to the other side. So I'm gonna do that left hand's gonna come up overhead as I turn to my left. It's gonna lean forward as I reach towards that camera. Right hand comes across there. Big breath in. Again, if you really reach those fingertips out there, like you're reaching to grab something, straining to get there, oh, we create a little active tension, opens up the core, opens up that thoracic spine. Let's go one more time here. Good, beautiful. Last one that we're gonna do is we're gonna go for some, we call it type two reaches, opening up that core in the front. I'm gonna go both hands, I'm gonna come rotating back to the left, breathe in. And then we come back to the right. Kind of like I'm reaching back to go catch something. Over through me. Good. Let's go one more each side here. Big reach. Beautiful. Ladies, congratulations. You're all done with your cool down.